All right, next. Well, we know how to find inverse of two by two matrix, but so, suppose we have three by three or four by four and so on. How do you find inverse? Here we discuss two methods of finding inverse. Method number one. Step one. We create a new matrix. We put together given matrix A, which is over here, and the identity matrix of the same size. In other words, we create a new matrix of the form A, I. Here's what we do next. We apply elementary row operations to the whole matrix in order to obtain I on the left. Once the goal is achieved on the right, we'll get A inverse. For example, here's given matrix A. We put together A and I. We apply elementary row operations in order to obtain I on the left. Here's one way to do it. Step one, let us add a row number two multiplied by two to row number one. We'll get one here. Next, let us use this one to get zero here and zero here. How? First, let us add a row number one to row number two zero. Then let us subtract a row number one from row number three, zero. Next, let us obtain one here. One way to do it is to add a row number three to row number two, one. Then let us use this one to get zero here and zero here. How? First, let us add a row number two to row number three, zero. Then let us subtract a row number two from a row number one, zero again. Lastly, if we subtract a row number three from row number two, we will get zero here. And now on the left, we have identity matrix. Therefore, on the right, we have A inverse. Any questions here? Wait, how did you go from the first transition? Yes, so, so how we jump from here to here, correct? Yeah. So in order to jump from here to here, we add to row number one, a row number two multiplied by two. Does this make sense? Okay, I see it now, yeah. Mm -hmm. Other questions? So the the two that you multiplied, you just like pick the like the two didn't come from anywhere. You just chose to multiply. Yeah, we just do it in our head. In other words, we add to row number one, a row number two twice. So what? Uh, like, why did we pick two? Well, uh, remember the goal is to obtain uh, the identity matrix on the left. I didn't. Oh, which one were we trying to set to one on the left side? I didn't know which, like, which part of the matrix we were specifically targeting with the first step. Is it the number? Is it the three in the top three, left? Yes, three. Oh, yes, three. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Because the goal is to obtain the identity matrix on the left. Identity matrix means top left entry is one. So step one, obtain one instead of three. There are several ways of doing that. One way is to divide a row number one by three. But in this case, we get a row number three multiplied by two from row number one. Or add row number two multiplied by two from uh, row number one. And it doesn't matter which choice we make. Like, it, like Absolutely. We do it does way. not matter. Okay. Uh, which sequence of elementary row operations we apply, once we get uh, I on the left, on the right, we'll get A inverse. And A inverse is unique. Okay. Mm -hmm. Other questions?
And so the formula for A inverse is uh, AI, right? Well, uh, I mean, it's not a formula, it's a procedure. So step one, form AI. Step two, apply elementary row operations to convert AI into I, ta, ta, ta. This theorem says that ta, ta, ta is actually A inverse. Once we get I on the left, on the right, we'll get A inverse. Does this make sense? Wait, can you repeat that? I didn't know. So once again, step one, put together two matrices. The given matrix A and the identity matrix of the corresponding size, of the same size. Step two, apply elementary row operations to the whole matrix, like we have here. Okay. In order to obtain I on the left, over here on the left. Once the goal is achieved on the right, we get A inverse. I see, okay. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Is there a simple reason that this works or is that just really difficult? No, uh, it's not so easy to explain. So some theorems that we discussed here are really hard to prove. For example, this one, which looks so natural, determinant of the product is the product of determinants. It's a very hard to prove theorem. So it's not that simple to explain why this algorithm works. Was that your question? Yeah. 